Hey there, CPO here, and it's time to do the first differential gear oil change on these uh, axles um, since the rear upgrade and the front install. So I'm gonna go through this process. This is about a 500 mile uh, fluid change. That was a recommendation uh, from Paul Warren over at World Tour Off-Road. He's the one that rebuilt my rear uh, axle and, uh, and the differential there. So. Um, I'm gonna take his advice and do this change at 500 miles. That's the break-in period for these new gears. So uh, I'm all set to do this. I do have a nice big catch pan for the fluid. And then for these Dynatrack uh, covers, we need sort of a special little socket. So this guy here is a uh, 5 16 um, 12 point socket. And that's what we're gonna use to break open that diff cover. So what do you say we get to it? By the way, I did go uh, drive around, took a little highway trip just to warm everything up and uh, thin that oil out. And then this one, I'm just gonna break loose. And by golly. That track bar wants to be in the way. All right, so that's just loose. And now what I wanna do is break this free. And I got a tool for that, this dead blow hammer. Ought to loosen things up a bit. All right, now, now that that's started. Go ahead and remove that plug. While that's draining, I decided to go ahead and just uh, clean the threads on these bolts just using a little dye and some uh, brake clean just to get some of that old RTV off. All right, so now that that's done draining, I'll finish pulling this last bolt off. So right here on the factory Dana 44 is a drain plug. What I just want to do is check. You can see there's some sludge there, but I'm looking for metal buildup or anything like that down here. All right, especially given that this is a fresh rebuild, I'm definitely going to pull this bottom drain plug. now. A lot of people don't even know that this drain plug is here on the stock JK44. I don't know if that's on all the vehicles or not with the 44 housing, but anyway, it's pretty tight. So I'm using my high lift jack cheater bar to get it loose. This is just a 3 8 inch. a uh, little square. So the reason I'm pulling this, and again, a lot of people don't even, I don't think know that this exists, but on the end of this is a magnet. So you can find any crud, uh, any metal crud will get magnetically brought over to this plug. I'm also gonna hit this with brake clean. just so I can get a good look at everything in there and make sure it all comes out.
And then while I'm down here, go ahead and get the rest of this gasket material scraped off. So now I need to get the gasket material off of the cover here. All right, here's a look at that magnetic drain plug uh, after it's been cleaned off. And its job is simply down there to collect any loose metal shavings that might uh, happen to get it cleaned out and uh, pulled away from the rest of the gear oil. So um, it did its job, I cleaned it off. Um, and you can expect a little bit of metal um, as these gears break in, which is why we're changing this uh, fluid at 500 miles, just to um, make sure that we're getting any of that out as soon as possible so it's not just hanging out in there. But anyway, uh, if you have a, a differential with one of these bottom drain plugs, uh, particularly if it's magnetic, you should pull it out, check it, clean it um, when you do your fluid change. Okay, so while I have this apart, one thing I can do is chalk the tires, put the transfer case in neutral, and then lift up one tire. And that'll give me a chance to rotate this and take a look at all of these teeth on this ring gear. And if I look back in there, I can kind of see the pinion gear, um, but I can just check this to see if I notice anything that looks like it might appear to be damaged. So, you know, while you've got it apart, you may as well take a good look at it. And I can kind of see inside there and see the gears inside this carrier. But everything looks good to me. All right, so now I'm just going to um, use this little, little wheel here to get rid of any of that other RTV. That saves a ton of time. Now that everything is dry, we can uh, go ahead and get some sealant on this. This is Ultra Black Permatex. Uh, I chose this because of its maximum oil resistance, but there's a lot of opinions on which is the best. So now, just going to try and get a couple of these started. Basically, I'm just pre-fitting a couple of these in here and they'll stay sort of in there. Now the goal is to Try and get this as close to lined up as possible. I'm just running these three in with the socket to get them snugged up in there. Now I'm just getting the thread started on these. And if you did a good job of not losing bolts, 
you'll have one for every hole that's always a good thing all right so now that I've got that done I'm gonna run them all just snug so on this DeWalt I've got three settings the number one setting basically will just get them tight until they feel tension and then stop so starting with this one that's already there just tension So that just made sure that they were all sucked down. Now I'm gonna go to the manual because you don't wanna over tighten these. You want about 20 to 25 foot pounds of torque. And that's not a lot. Covers back on. Now what I wanna do is remove this little weep hole plug so that I can fill this with diff fluid. I wanna go ahead and make sure that the vehicle is back flat on the ground. Um, before I do this, so I'm going to drop this tire um, that I had lifted so that I could check the gears. All right, so this little plug is a 3 16 And its entire purpose is to tell you when you've got enough oil in the differential. So when we fill it up, when oil comes out of there, we're done. So we also wanna have this ready to replug. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, thread sealant on it to have it ready because this is gonna be the first thing I put on after I get the, uh, the oil in. All right, and last thing before we start putting oil in is we gotta get that bottom drain plug back in. Now this calls for approximately two quarts what I'm using is Amsoil Severe Gear 75140. And I have a handy dandy little pump. And remember, what I'm looking for is for oil to come seeping out of that, but uh, I've got plenty of time before that's an issue. So this little pump hose is cool, it's got a little in that just sort of clips in and uh, holds the end of the hose in place. All right, we're through the first bottle and we're gonna trade for the second one. All right, so now what I'm watching for is that weep hole. And there you go, see it coming out? That tells us it's full. And plug that bad boy up. All right, so we got the plug back in and now I can just go ahead and install this top plug. Boom. Mission complete. That is changing the diff fluid in a rear uh, Dana 44 with the Dynatrack cover. Uh, now, after all that, you'll say, well, isn't there a plug on the side you can drain from and then you can fill from the top? Why do we have to go through the trouble of taking the entire cover off? And the answer is you don't, but it gives me a chance to look at everything, make sure everything's the way I expect it to be, double check that new gear install, double check that air line. In the future, if I'm in a hurry, I'll probably just use the drain plug. It's convenient in the rear because I can do that. In the front, I have no drain plug option. It's a full diff cover removal every time, and that's just the way it is. So um, your mileage may vary, but uh, anyway, that's it, swapping out the diff fluid in uh, Dana 44. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.